but let's begin with the invocation offered by Jeff's brother, Steve Guy. Good morning. I uh, told Perry this morning when I came here, I said, I kind of feel like a politician having breakfast with 250 people, most of whom I don't even know. Uh, I thought I was going to surprise my brother this morning because I did not tell him when he asked me to come and Perry asked me to do the invocation. Then I found out that he kind of volunteered me. <laughs> so uh, uh, I work on behalf of his family and on my behalf, on his behalf, I would like to thank you very much for having this for him. We really appreciate that. And as a member of the community, I would very much like to thank you all, all of you, whether you're volunteers, board members, staff members, counselors, for what you're doing for the youth or, um, in this area. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, if you would please now bow and I want to thank the Lord for um, our blessing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, people who are willing to give of their time, talents, and their energy to help other people just for the sake of wanting to help them. Uh, I thank you for Jeff's service to this board and, and the several boards that he's been on. Pray that you continue to bless these people in their work. And we thank you for this food that you've given us. May that you bless it to the nourishment of our bodies and to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Mr. Denny as a continuing chair of that board, bring that group, group back together because, you know, I think that uh, there's a lot of problems that we can solve back then. So, so with all that, you know, the other thing about Jeff, you know, is he's just a really good guy. And we all know that. So, Jeff, I want to congratulate you on this great honor today. Thank you for all that you've done for you personally. You know, it's your day. It's your event. So enjoy it. Beginning with Youth First board members, 
former board members, and advisory council members. At this time, I'd like those board members, former board members, and advisory council members to stand so we can show our appreciation for your leadership. Please stand. without the close collaboration and contributions of our school partners. If you are here representing a school corporation or a school today, please stand so we can also appreciate you and your colleagues. We also have champions among our elected officials. If you are an elected leader, please stand and receive our gratitude. <laughs> Finally, let's recognize you first amazing staff, the social workers and program team, the operations team, the philanthropy team. It takes everyone to make this good work happen. You first staff, please stand so we can recognize your wonderful work on behalf of Young <laughs> Some of our past breakfast honorees are here as well. Here's a roll call of all of our past champions, beginning with Dr. William Wooten, the first original champion and founder. Our first Champions Breakfast was held in 2008 when we honored Marjorie Soyagans and the Welburn Baptist Foundation. Followed by Jane Blacker Owen and the Blacker Foundation in 2009. Ron Romain in 2010. Don Mattingly in 2011. Bill Kester in 2012. Bill and Phyllis Bussing in 2013. Bob, Randy, and Rick Schultz in 2014. Bob Tiemann in 2015. Larry Meeks and Rita Meeks in 2016. Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch in 2017. Steve Britz in 2018. Dan Ahrens in 2019. In 2020, during the pandemic year, we celebrated virtually by honoring you first frontline team who helped kids, families, and teachers cope with the stresses and challenges of COVID-19 and all the consequences. Last year, we came back together to celebrate John and Gail Dunn as our 2021 champions, which brings us to this year and Jeff Dye, a former board member, a former board chair, who remains in Youth First Corner. He has been a driving force behind Youth First Growth and Development and an invaluable mentor to me. Thank you, Jeff. His enthusiasm and expertise are often the key ingredients to the success of many community endeavors, including Youth First. Today, 83 Youth First social workers and over 300 prevention programs are embedded in 117 schools in 13 counties where they are accessible to over 50,000 students plus their parents, caregivers, and teachers. That seems like a very big footprint, doesn't it? When you think about this organization which was founded right here in, it'll be 25 years ago, 25 years ago next spring. It is a big footprint. It is, has a big impact. And some might say, are we getting too big? My answer to you is, these are big problems. And we have to tackle them with evidence-based approaches to address issues early on before they become the biggest problems our communities face. It's a big problem for an individual child. It's a big problem for our schools. 
is a big problem for our communities, in our state, in our country. Thankfully, Youth First is taking care of this corner of the world by partnering with schools to meet the challenges that young people face today. Those problems that become big, big like addiction, overdoses, suicides, the things that burden our, our, our communities, our taxpayers, jails, crime, violence, the cost of not doing this work is too great. So I say to you, bid is for meeting the problem at the level that it is, which is very, very big, and we're proud to do it. Not only are we, I guess, big or growing, but I want you to know we're growing deeper. Our communities right here in this footprint are seeing more of youth first service in their schools thanks to our school partners. And particularly, the EBSC added 12 more positions last year, and we're very grateful for that. And we continue to get requests from schools for more of this service. And we will step up to the plate as long as we can find the resources and build the community support. Again, unfortunately, many young people struggle with stress, anxiety, or other traumas, which can be a huge barrier to school success and too often leads to risky or life-threatening behaviors. In fact, the U.S. Surgeon General says we are in the midst of a youth mental health crisis. But the good news is, with skilled support, young people can learn to cope and overcome their challenges. And that's exactly why these Youth First Social Workers and Prevention Programs are embedded in schools and communities. They are there to strengthen the mental health and well-being of youth and families, especially when it feels like their world is falling apart. At approximately 12.59 p.m. on August 10th, 2022, an explosion tore through the 1,000 block of North Weinbach Avenue in Evansville. At nearby Vogel Elementary School, it was the first day of school for children whose last names started with K through C. Students and staff felt the impact of the explosion and immediately wondered what had happened. When we heard it and we felt it, the entire school felt it, um, we thought by Council Reagan here is like, a tree just fell on the roof again. I, I don't think that's a tree. My survival mode kicked in immediately. I needed to see if our school and our surrounding area was safe. And so I went outside to kind of see what was going on. Then I came back inside when I realized the building was okay. So I got on announcements that just said, boys and girls, uh, I know you heard the big bang. Our school is safe right now. I'm not sure what's happened in the neighborhood, but I want you to know that we're all safe and I will let you know what is going to occur uh, as soon as I have more details. While first responders were jumping into action to address the physical damage, Youth First Social Worker Lori Pack, Team and Vogel were jumping into action to assess and address the other types of fallout from this tragedy. We both went into crisis our whole school, our whole team went into crisis mode and how can we help? What, what is the need? Who was impacted? How were they impacted? How can we find this information out quickly? I, uh, I was thinking about um, how we could help everybody and um, what the kids needed at that point. It, it, it was scary for everyone. I mean, um, it was less than that. I mean, I should stay on the street from the school, but we're in the neighborhood and the whole house shook. I really thought it was a, a tree falling on the house. That's how, I mean, it, it just, everything shook and, and they were scared and they were worried about all the, the people that were impacted by that. All the families of Oga were affected in some way, um, but there were five families that were displaced and two other families that, um, that needed a little bit more assistance. You know, the initial impact of dropping your kindergartner off for the very first time and an explosion happens just in the neighborhood near the school. You know, all of the parents and families were, were shocked, worried, overwhelmed, had a lot of big emotions in the beginning. But I think Vogel did a great job, and Mrs. Paul included, did a great job of really putting the parents and the kids at ease 
um, and then having the resources, resources here for them, that uh, was great. So really, they were able to get through um, the day and then the rest of the week, um, and they were okay. The flexibility, expertise, and responsiveness of a youth-first social worker can address such a wide range of concerns, even the most unexpected. Stepping in during a crisis is just one of many ways that Youth First Social Workers support kids and families. They serve the entire school building with tiered programming for larger groups of students and training and support for teachers and parents. Additionally, they work with kids one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to overcome obstacles, succeed academically, and pursue safe, healthy, and productive lives. Lori Powell has been serving the vocal community in this way for six years. She is so intentional in meeting the needs of not only our kids, but our families. And that's a little bit different than the role of a counselor. There's not really a normal day to day at vocal, um, but I try to schedule uh, my times for each of my kids. And, um, but sometimes some things happen and it's all switched up. Um, I help kids with um, with issues like self-esteem, resolving conflicts. Um, you know, if if they lost a loved one or um, they're adjusting to divorce, um, how to express their emotions appropriately. Having a social worker, I cannot tell you how happy I am. It is the best experience. Now that I've gone those years of administration without it in middle school, I can't imagine not having one. And especially with Lori, she brings something to the table that the rest of us sometimes, whether it's time, um, when you have a high need school with lots of needs, we can't get to 530 something of them. And, and it's just another person with a great skill set to help our kids and our families. Students thrive in school when connected to a youth first social worker, and we know the benefits endure. The positive effects of this special relationship ripple out to their families, friends, and ultimately the community. Mrs. Powell's the best. Do you like working with Mrs. Powell? When there's an issue, I'm able to talk to Mrs. Powell about it. Her and I are kind of, we're able to kind of work together as a team. So she's here with them, working with them. Um, seeing how they're progressing in school, and then I'm at home working with them at home. So, and we talk about, we talk about some things that are having issues with, we try to work together, and try to stay on the same page, so that things are a bit consistent between both places. This kind of collaboration is happening all across the Youth First Service area. Thanks to your investment, what Lori Powell was able to do at Vogel, whether it's a calm day or a crisis day, is possible at all 110 schools served by a Youth First Social Worker. Thank you so much, donors, and everyone that's involved in making Youth First possible um, and available for parents like myself um, at the schools. Um, it's truly appreciated. We thank you. To get involved with Youth First and to learn more, visit youthfirstinc.org.
Mary, Mary says that Jeff should be on the Mount Rushmore of Youth First Volunteers. And I have witnessed, Jeff, your terrific commitment of time, talent, and treasure to the organization and its prevention and social work services across Indiana. Thinking of Mount Rushmore, uh, I found a quote from George Washington that I thought was a good fit for you. It says, make sure you're doing what God wants you to do and do it with all your strength. And I thought that fit Jeff uh, very well. It seemed to fit his personal traits of sincerity, humility, leadership, love for family, love for community service, and passion, commitment, and perseverance. Uh, passion, commitment, and perseverance, I thought were the key things. And Jeff and many of our past honorees share those traits and exemplify uh, those traits. What more do we want in a volunteer besides passion, commitment, and perseverance? Uh, I might mention that Youth First as an organization has those traits. Our board members, our volunteers, our social workers, staff, they are totally committed to effective prevention and the well-being of children in our service area. They are passionate about the mental health and safety of children. And Youth First as an organization years ago adopted the motto of uh, Winston Churchill to never, 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 never give up. Uh, perseverance. We are, we are here to stay. We're not going to quit. And the children were, were there to serve. I've known Jeff for at least six or seven years now, and he's one of many friends and an ongoing relationship that he first blessed me with. I told someone yesterday that, you know, I don't know doctors anymore. I don't know all of you guys. You know, it's a, it's a completely different circle of friends and relationships that I've established, almost all of them, through you first. Jeff didn't feel like he deserved today's recognition. I was a little concerned when we met with him to tell him that he was going to be the honoree this year. His face was red. His body was shaking. Uh, he, he was you know, trying to talk us out of it. Uh, I was ready to dial 911. Uh, but Jeff's passion for the mission of his first runs quite deep. Today, Jeff, you're being recognized as a champion of Youth First. This is your day. You finally made it to the Wheaties box. What a deal. The committee was considering, and I voted for, the Gold Girl X. And I think Tim Hollander was going to donate a good time to But uh, they said, he won the Wheaties box. So we decided to do it again. You know, it's an honor to be cherished, not because being on the box is so special, but because so many of your peers, friends, business associates, and others in our community are appreciative and feel you were very deserving. Those of you who have been recognized, those, there are those who have been recognized before you. Uh, you saw the pictures in Perry West of any of them, some are here today. Uh, each prior champion supported youth first in some similar, but also in their very unique ways. And I, I think it's a quite notable and diverse group of people who not only feel strongly about the youth first mission, but also make a difference in our community because they love Evansville and they want to give back. You helped youth first refine, grow, and sustain our efforts to save young lives by strengthening families and young people through evidence-based programs that prevent or reduce substance use, improve mental health, and maximize student success. When Jeff and I met recently, we talked over lunch and talked about the young man in this picture on the right, the uh, German-American bank people will recognize him as Ethan. 
And uh, I had to share a little bit about Ethan's story here today. Ethan was a freshman at Harrison High School. Our social worker was introducing herself to the class. Ethan got upset, stormed out of the room, and waited outside for the social worker. When she exited the room, he commenced to cuss her out, not sparing any words. And the assistant principal suspended him from school for three days. When he returned, the assistant principal put the two of them together to reconcile the differences, and Ethan was hooked by youth first. Uh, he entered a program called Reconnecting Youth, which is a full semester class taught by a social worker for kids that are on a dropout trajectory, and that fit Ethan's description. He was in trouble with substance use, failing in his classwork, angry at the world alienated from good friends and family. Through the course of that semester, he gave up his drugs. He redirected his life. He became somewhat of a spokesman for our organization. He went with a group of staff people to visit the German American uh, about their sponsorship and their support for the organization, and he gave them a job. He had spent the last couple of years of his high school career as a bank teller. He went on to uh, graduate from high school, joined the National Guard, uh, did basic training, came back, uh, started with college work, got married, bought a house, started a small business, and uh, uh, his life was uh, continuing in the right direction. About six or eight months ago, he had a terrible car wreck and ripped up his right arm, uh, with tendon and nerve damage, required five or six operations in Louisville to put his arm together again. <clears throat> he uh, has recovered remarkably well, and now the uh, local unit of our National Guard is being deployed to Iraq, and Ethan is in Oklahoma receiving some additional training before deployment overseas. Uh, you'll never guess who his commanding officer it's the gentleman on the left. That's the assistant principal who suspended him from school many years ago. They are good buddies and have the greatest respect for one another. Very uh, recently spoke to both of them by Zoom, and uh, Captain Griffin, who's the assistant principal at Harrison, made a comment that not every day of these uh, I think that, that's Ethan, and a lot of the kids we serve. Um, <clears throat> Jeff, you, you're an American. Our supporters, our sponsors, our staff are all part of his success and the success of thousands of other kids that have turned around my youth first. No matter how little you give them, how much you give them, every little bit. And one life turned around and pays for our yearly budget. And of course, we have one child's life. Uh, Ethan and other kids like him were my inspiration for starting the first over 25 years ago. And by the time they arrived at a hospital treatment program where I was a medical director, they were pretty far down the road with regards to the problem. It was, it was quite difficult to help them. It was expensive and became more and more constrained by insurance restrictions. And uh, I started looking for other solutions, and that's what led to the development of Youth First. Uh, hospital intervention was not often successful, and I found that Youth First was helpful in not only identifying kids at a stage of problem development where I had a better chance of helping but also supporting those kids when they return to the school environment uh, as they continue to try to improve and stabilize their lives. I'm convinced that effective prevention and early intervention is the answer to these types of problems. We need to reach children early to reduce risk factors, strengthen protective factors, before substance use, addiction, and mental illness, before they drop out of school, and before criminal behaviors 
before other serious and sometimes irreversible problems. And today, Youth First is doing that in a very systematic, professional manner, in no small part because of Jeff Dye and his leadership. On the count of three, I would like to hear a big thank you, Jeff, <laughs> for his service. One, two, three. Thank you, Jack. He always has the university's best interest at heart 
and our student success is always at the heart of his service. I've lost track of how many times Jeff you've asked, how can I help? As, an attest as a testament to this loyalty, Jeff has supported countless areas of the university through his own thinking. Harlaxton College, engineering student projects, soccer, basketball, volleyball, baseball, golf, the theater society, student scholarships, the Purple Aces Club, the Schrager Family School of Business Administration, Friends of Union Music, and much more. Jeff, you model generosity through your selflessness, through your loyalty, and your enthusiasm to contribute to the success of others. And as an alumnus of the University of Evansville, you bring great pride to your own mother. Congratulations, Jeff. We thank you gratefully for your Purple Aces pride and servant leader spirit. I'm sorry, servant leadership spirit. You aced it. two minutes for three, I think. This is uh, Jeff right here. I thought it was uh, Frank Gifford. Uh, but I think it is Jeff. But uh, Jeff, uh, a little twink, I thought it was a little twinkle well, or what is that lady has a golden wand. Uh, he's like that Tinker Bell. Uh, anything he touches, it just shines. Uh, everything's been said, it's so very true. I've only known him six years. I've been at the Evansville Wartime Museum. He was our second uh, chairman, and he was the second chairman that was in its, what you call a toddler stage. So the toddler stage is sort of a difficult stage for most people, uh, but he got us through that stage. We're 19 years right now, so I think some teachers here, we've got about 20 representatives of the school system that uh, youth first helps a lot with. Um, nature versus nurture. Uh, that's really what Bill Wooten's talk about. Nature is what have all of you been given with your genetic makeup. And the second thing is what's your nurture? What have you been given by your family, your friends, your uh, schools, other things? And Jeff, Jeff was blessed. He had good nature, he had good nurture. Not all of us have all been blessed with high qualities of both, but that's what you first helps. He helps people that have had some problems with nature and also some problems with nurture. And uh, just a short aside, uh, Bill Stone and Mary Stone have given a, a lot of money to help Southwest Virginia and with youth with, uh, with mental health. And the head of psychiatry, the second leading person in psychiatry in the United States is named Steve Strakowski. And he's just come back home in Indiana. He will be part time air base uh, advisor. And he's probably one of the uh, number one persons in how to figure algorithms out. And he met you first. He met Bill Wooten two or three weeks ago. And he said, Oh my gosh, look at the infrastructure that's already here. Absolutely, the infrastructure was here. And that's you first. But back to, and so they're going to help. And Youth First is already helping people with some mental health issues, maybe they need nature or nurture. Maybe medicines will help the nature part of it, and nurture, Youth First is definitely going to help the nurture part. So go on, Youth First. Now, Jeff and I, I'm supposed to talk about him, and so i got about 30 seconds to talk about Jeff and I. <laughs> meeting only, meeting only uh, eight years ago, um, again, my first point, he just, I would love his signature on anything. Once his signature's there, it becomes golden because I know he's put all the effort and all the smarts and all the, uh, just all the passion, just what Bill Wooden said. And I'm not saying everything he does, just he does it right. He doesn't do it halfway. So he's a pillar of the community and uh, he's a real strong pillar. I'm just so 
grateful to have known him the last few years. And he's done so many things I can't even tell you for the episode of Wartime Museum and Youth around here. Jeff, you ought to be proud of yourself. Marty, you ought to be proud of him. Kids, uh, you got a good man here. Okay. Um, he was the president, and 
he worked tirelessly, as Dr. Ronnie said at the beginning, they were they were just beginning. And now he calls them teenagers, but boy, they are really, really getting sophisticated. And the library. There have been so many, so many books donated that they finally said, let's build a library. And that's where his grandchildren came in. He uh, enticed them to come out to the museum and help catalog all the books, along with other friends of the museum. And then the Strategic Planning Committee is what is going on right now. They've been, uh, about 2017 was when they formed the museum. And so now it's getting so well put together and so well known that they had to have a strategic committee. And Jeff was part of that, going out and interviewing many, some of you here in the audience. So he works, like everybody said, you give him a project, you don't have to ask questions. Are you on target or is it just about finished? He'll take care of it. Thank you.
Jeff, uh, is that person really getting ready to graduate from college and, you know, we're going to bring on board? He's like, oh, no, they're in middle school or a freshman in high school. <laughs> but that's how Jeff believes. Uh, he, he has always been one to spend quality time, not superficial, but really, really quality time with kids especially, uh, really setting them on a path, giving them a hand up, and sticking with it, right? That's been a theme here today is he sticks to it when he believes in it. And I can't tell you how many of those uh, kids uh, either came to work for us and went on to have great careers, or Jeff was just as happy if they uh, decided to not be an engineer, maybe go into nursing or whatever the career path may be. He was just as happy uh, for them as long as he knew that they were going to be successful and uh, you know do well in life. And uh, you know, what what more can you can you ask, right? Uh, of somebody that's a friend, somebody that's a colleague, and somebody that you know is uh, making a difference. So. Again, Jeff, uh, I know that's just how you roll. Uh, Jeff used to use the word awesome all the time. <laughs> we used to get a big kick out of that. And uh, Jeff, that's, that's the word I would say to you this morning. You're awesome. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, just, just in closing, I would say that, um, you know, whether Jeff is uh, recruiting somebody to this community, advocating uh, uh, on behalf of this community, uh, attending an Aces game uh, in the stands, cheering them on, uh, a board position, whatever it may be, he's all in, heart and soul, 110%, and why not be on the uh, box of Weebies, Jeff? Uh, congratulations, uh, you are truly awesome and a great friend, and uh, we're, all, we're all better because of you. Thank you.
just a just a piggyback on this story. While that month was going on, our youth first social worker, Mary Ruth Brandstetter, without being asked, sought out our four kids at St. Joe's School and actively met with them on a regular basis to protect their mental health and their emotional health at a time where you know we couldn't be there. It was uncertain. So we are so grateful to our social worker. We're so grateful to Bill Wooten, and we couldn't think of a better champion than Jeff Dyke. So thank you again to you first for celebrating Jeff today. Um, while we are so grateful for your passion and commitment to Evansville's youth, we are honored to call you our friend. beautiful place this is to have this event too so uh, I really can't think of anybody that deserves this honor more than Jeff and I. My experience with Jeff goes back when I used to own a business we did a lot of work that Jeff was the specifying engineer uh, so he used to do inspections and made sure that I got paid if we did it right and he would prove it. Jeff Dye is just uh, an unbelievable guy that my experiences for him, most people don't get an opportunity to work with the person that's getting an honor like this. And I feel very honored to have worked hand in hand with Jeff on many occasions. Uh, he's, he's just one of those guys you want to be around. He's just a wonderful person. He's everything that he appears to be. When I was uh, felt very honored to be invited to join the uh, Hall of Fame for the Junior Achievement, one of the first guys that I called was Jeff. And I said, Jeff, I want you to sit at my table if you would. And I caught a lot of static because they said he actually had to miss a board meeting to come to my induction. But one of the things that Jeff really is, is known for is his uh, integrity, his, his honor that he has. When he used to be the inspector on a job that we would have done, I always knew we were going to get a fair shake because he always was very fair and just a wonderful guy to do business with. Jeff, we're proud of you and congratulations. Thank you. 